Okay, Year 7, welcome to the next instalment of your art lesson where we are attempting to add colour and blending and layering our yellow and our red within our Chupa Chups lolly. So, in front of you, you have this image. Now, my image has got some of the yellow and the red already added in to help you understand the processes today, but the majority of you should have recorded quite a lot of your blues. You should have started to look at the white sections and the reflections and that creased reflections in the wrapper, looking at Sarah Graham's work, and you will also have your own colour version of this image directly next to where you're working. So it's really important that you keep looking back, you keep checking what you have produced. You don't just kind of jump in feet first and think, right, I'm going to colour it in and then look later. You must always keep looking. So there's a couple of things we're going to do today and a couple of things you're going to need. So you're definitely going to need a yellow pencil. You definitely need to, going to need a red pencil today. And then another colour I'd probably advise you if you've got it in your pencils is an orange. And you can also see here creeping in, there's a brown. Now, these two colours, I'm going to just take them away for one moment because we're going to come back to those later. I'm going to take away, first of all, my red and I'm going to start with my yellow. So when I'm doing my yellow, really importantly, we're going to think about layering our colour. So I'm just going to make a mark here. My first layer of yellow, when I'm using a circular motion, it's quite light. I can see the surface of my paper through this yellow. If I look at my Chupa Chups image, because it's a candy wrapper, because it's a sweet, and because of the way Sarah Graham has painted it, the colour is really intense. So, to make my colour more intense, I'm going to start adding in more pressure. And the more pressure I add, and keeping my pencil marks nice and small, I can make my colour really, really intense. So, if I make my colour really intense, it is hard afterwards to blend in a colour on top. It wants to kind of almost be, it kind of repels and rejects the colour. So you see how there there's kind of a line. So when we're working today, we don't want to be pressing on too hard to begin with. We're going to be working lightly and then we're going to build up our colour. We want to add something else in with more circular motion and building up our tones. So going back to our work today. Today we are going to look at the red and the yellow sections and I hope that you notice my pencils, because I'm working in small areas, are really really sharp. If they're not sharp I'm going to struggle to add in my detail and I'm going to really carefully, and it's not so much of an issue with the red, I'm going to go in and I'm going to record my red. So we can press on nice and hard. It's going to be important with your yellow that when you work with your yellow, however, one, that you rub out lots of details, kind of your planning. So if you've got your lines that are showing in between where you've used your grid, the first thing I would advise you to do is to rub those out. And I want you to see that I'm using my circular motion and I'm just starting with a light shade. Now, looking at the Chupa Chups logo, I know that this Chupa Chups logo has a little bit of a gap between the yellow, the red, there's a little bit of white, and then there's a yellow again. So I'll just remind you of that, and I'm going to do it here. So if I was looking at my Chupa Chups logo, it has a section like this, it then has another layer like this and then it has another layer but can you see how I've left a white gap in between so that's really important as you look you're able to record those things so back to our drawing as we're working we're using our circular motion and we're recording what we see. Nice and lightly, building up our yellow tones. So my first layer 
is light. My first layer, I can see the paper through. I'm going to go inside my letters. I'm going to keep my pencil marks nice and smooth and small. So I'm not trying to cover up areas. I can see here there's a little bit of pencil mark that I left behind. So I'm just going to go back and rub that out. I know as well from my lettering there are parts of it here, there's a crease. So I'm going to make sure that really carefully I add in my yellow. Now I talked about whether or not I might need to use an orange. I want to make my colour a little bit more intense. And when I'm doing that, I'm going to add the tiniest, tiniest bit of orange inside. I'm not making this a really bright colour. just want this to warm up the yellow. And again, I'm being really careful. I'm not just putting it on anywhere. I'm using it in the areas where I've already put my yellow. Then I'm going to go back to my yellow and I can start to think about adding a little bit more pressure. So as I work, I'm going to go back in. I'm going to start building up ever so gently my colour. As you are working, keep checking your image. Don't just use guesswork. Keep looking back to your original image to record what you can see. Now I'm going to move on to the red, just to get you to look very, very carefully. So when I'm doing my red, again, make sure your pencil is really sharp. If your pencil isn't sharp, you're not going to be accurate with your shapes. So you've got to make sure as you work, you're pressing on. We want this logo to stand out. We want it to be nice and strong. So taking your time. Okay. So working your way around your drawing, planning carefully, keeping your pencil nice and sharp. We don't want kind of fluffy, messy marks, especially here because the colour is so bold and so bright. So I'm going to work my way around. So I'm going to stop there with my red because I need to go back. I want to add in a little bit more of my yellow. Again, I might just want to add in a tiny, tiny amount of my orange just to warm it up a little bit. You don't have to add the orange in, but if you've got it and you want to use it, you can do. I'd always advise you on the side of your work to have a little practice with your pencil crayons, see how they're looking, make sure that you are being able to blend the correct colours. So, working into your top section, I want to draw your attention now a little bit further down. So I want you to look at where the wrapper has folded and it's creased and some of these sections in here are going to have areas that have got little bits of shadow on them. So you can see already on this one, this started off as a bright yellow and then I've started just at the edges to work in a little bit of red and also a little bit of orange. The main thing is that you take your time, the main thing is that you look really carefully this is not a race. If you want a really good drawing, it's about you being accurate. It's about you looking carefully, taking your time. It's not about trying to put a colour on as quickly as possible. Look at where the light is reflecting. Look at what you can see. Take your time for an accurate drawing. Okay. 